Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the Drobo Broadcast Network. My name is Mario Blandini at Drobo, and today we've got a great topic for all those home users out there, and actually for business, too. Uh, some great technical discussion in a non-technical way about how to do off-site backup. A lot of folks are very interested in that. And joining us is special guest Nathaniel Lindley, who is a technology support specialist by day, but uh, like a lot of us, <laughs> he tends to do all of the tech support uh, sort of things for his family by night. He's joining us from Minnesota today. How are you doing today, Nathaniel? I'm doing great. Beautiful day here in Minnesota. Glad to have you. And as we talk a little bit more about the discussion, protecting data is important. I think for you personally, there's a lot of folks that ask you for advice, friends, family, a pretty extended group. And I'm happy to have you on as a guest expert because uh, you have helped them and in doing so come up with a little recipe that is working well, even for your non-technical friends and family. So uh, maybe you can give us a little bit of background on yourself. Right. Well, I'm um, sort of a tech enthusiast and uh, educator by trade. So I work in the public school districts, um, but I've always been interested in technology and backup. And so the, the story with Crash Plan and Drovo started in early 2008 when a friend of mine and I were trying to find a way to back up all of our photos of our new kids and things like that to each other across the cities and um, find a way to do off-site backup. And we, we struggled for a long time finding a solution because we couldn't set up an FTP server very securely, and we wanted to make sure it was encrypted to do that. And we knew that relying on taking disks of CDs or external hard drives back and forth to each other's house was just not going to be reliable or consistent. Right. So anyway, we stumbled upon CrashPlan um, in its early days as a consumer product and started using that. Um, and just loved it because it was such a simple solution for us to use. It was encrypted, secure. It took advantage of storage we already had, mm -hmm. and it was cross-platform. And we'll be talking about all those advantages here throughout today's discussion. So uh, folks who are out there using a storage device that protects them from a hard drive failure, like a Drobo, uh, have great protection, but that is just the start. You really have to have a backup because uh, files can be corrupted and such, but you also have to have an uh, off-site backup to really be 100% secure. And up uh, where you are amongst friends and family, what type of natural disasters are people worried about? I guess there is a little bit of flooding. Um, what type of stuff really has your friends and family motivated to get that data off-site? Well, there's a couple of things. We don't have the earthquake risk that you may have out in California, right. but we do have <laughs> Uh, tornadoes are a real bad um, natural disaster that can come through the Midwest here, as well as flooding and fire. Um, fortunately, I haven't personally experienced any of those, but you also have the man-made risk of uh, losing something, having it stolen out of your car, or someone breaking into your house and stealing your stuff. I know there's been stories of uh, celebrities who have lost their laptops and the backup hard drive that was connected to it. So that's a, it's a good motivation for off-site. That's right. And it really can happen to you. Uh, I also personally, Nathaniel, have never had one of those uh, disasters and I do religiously take my stuff off site, but heck, I'm a kind of a geekier guy. It's been easier for me over the years. And there are things like fires, floods, and thefts that really do happen. Uh, I think that there is a concept that uh, if I have RAID protection, maybe I don't need to back my stuff up because I'm protected from a hard drive failure. Well, to have a comprehensive set of protection, not unlike insurance, uh, we have something to keep it easy for people. Three, two, one. You got to have three copies of any data that you really want to keep. That'll make sure that uh, you don't lose them all at the same time. If they're on two different devices and media, you get a lot better protection. And really, one of those locations needs to be off-site because uh, you can have the best backup protection in the world. But if your backup drive gets stolen or there's a flood or a file, you are uh, kind of in, in bad shape. So uh, when is it that folks ask you about getting help because you're kind of the resident, <laughs> resident expert there? I mean, are they asking you early in the process or are they asking you after they've already screwed something up? Uh, most often it's after something bad has happened. Right. <laughs> um, and is, as the family tech support guy, um, it, it usually comes with my laptop's acting funny or the hard drive crashed or it's just really slow, what can I do? And so I, I'm always willing to try to help out my friends and family because of a lot of knowledge in the area. But what I, what I try to point out is, well, we recovered your data this time or I was able to get it copied off and then fix this time, but what happens the next time when I can't do it? And so we talk a little bit about backup 
policies and why you would back up. And then I pretty much, if I fixed your computer, you're going to be using CrashPlan. Um, and then I offer backup storage at my house for friends and family. And uh, when I started, this was easy. I put in a 300 gig, you know, drive, and it was no problem. But as it grew, I found that I didn't want to cascade hard drives, um, and I needed more space to store all the data for my family and friends. And that's where I looked at the Drobo as the solution for that, that need. Yeah, and I think from a basic architecture perspective, folks probably have most everything they need already in order to have an effective offsite backup solution. And we're talking specifically about how to do social backup with a product like CrashPlan. If they've got some computers, as long as those things are powered on, they can run that backup software. Is that something you find amongst friends and family uh, is a challenge for them, or are they able to leave their systems on long enough for the backups to occur on a regular basis? Since I'm a sort of repository for their data, I have a, a Mac Mini that I, I use hooked up to a Drobo second generation, and it's on all the time. So I've made myself available for them to back up to me people that uh, I back up to have the same sort of setup where it's a computer that's on 90% of the time and because the way the product works it just runs the backup whenever it can and whenever it can connect so it's just continuous. We have done a few instances where they've had a real large backup set and we've done it at their house and I've showed them how to store the data in the archives using CrashPlan on an external drive and then we drive it over to my house, transfer it and attach what they call attach the archive to the Mac Mini and the Drobo so that the next time their computer backs up from afar, it's a very small incremental update. And that's for uh, the folks out there who have a really big set of data. Most of the folks you're, you're uh, helping out with with backup, though, can start off pretty small and going over the Internet, you know, works pretty easy. You talked about both directions as well. So you are not just the hub or destination for all the social backup. The love is being shared <laughs> by directionally, right. so to speak. You're doing it all to your friends as well. Right. So in my... Um, in terms of the size of the data sets, I have some friends that have 2 gigs, 5 gigs of data, so real small sets, but I have some, like my in-laws, who have large collections of photo libraries of my kids that I want to make sure they're protected, and those can be up to 600 gigs sure. um, that I'm storing. So it, it can really range, and it's not really limited. Um, the, the software's not limited, and so the Drobo came into uh, play when I needed more than a 2 terabyte hard drive. And um, so I started expanding it because uh, it's flexible that way. In terms of the back and forth, yeah, my, my three main machines, um, I have an iMac, a MacBook, and a Windows 7 desktop, all back up to three separate sites. So I back up in my house locally over the LAN to this Mac Mini and a Drobo. Mm -hmm. I back up to a friend's house where he's running a Windows Home server, and then I, additionally, I pay for the backup to CrashPlan Central. Right. And um, I just really am risk adverse, and I know that all my photos are protected in three different instances real time, and uh, I don't have to worry about that. And that's the point we make here in terms of the basic architecture. You're, if you have a connection to the internet, you can back up to your friends socially. You can also back up to a cloud service provider. In the case we're talking about here, the uh, crash plan cloud will give you that extra protection for a subset of what gets backed up. You may not be able to afford unlimited or choose unlimited, but you, you could, and we'll give you all the pricing here uh, toward the end of today's discussion. But uh, if you just want to get an extra protection for a little bit uh, more, the 10 gig cloud service from uh, crash plan can be a great solution for folks. I, what backup is for most home users, Nathaniel, at least you know my friends and family and the folks that uh, have Drobos and ask us is that it's time consuming and complicated. That's really what's keeping them from doing it. It's not necessarily cost per se, because with a Drobo and a crash plan, it can be very affordable to do it. Uh, it's not repeatedly and reliably done is another thing that, that, that's tough. And then, you know, there's too many options to choose from. I think that's another thing yeah. that makes it complicated. So, hey, when you're talking to your home users about backup, what are the things that are interesting? I just pulled some of these notes based on kind of our discussion earlier. It being easy and it being multi-platform is a big deal, right? Yeah, yeah. So multi-platform is good because we live in an age where everyone picks the platform they want, you know, whether it's Mac or Windows or Linux or even Solaris, you know. We don't want to limit it to one platform or another. Yeah, a lot of people just don't know where to get started. And so they'll say, well, yeah, I know I should have done that, but I didn't know how to do it or I didn't know what I needed. And so 
helping them just get a kickstart on that process or say, hey, let me let me give you this. You can try it for free if you like it. You can, you know, pay for additional features and back up to the cloud, but at least for free you've got something done. And uh, really that's what people want is that kickstart help of where do I get started and, and what do I need to do. That's that's the biggest thing. And I, I just think it, both of these tools fit that. Now, for me, the Drobo is, is essential because of the quantity of data that I'm storing and need yep. to back up. Um, but most people can really use an, a single external drive or an internal, depending on how much they need, if they're storing data for their family or someone else. Um, but we have uh, talked to a lot of photographers or professionals that have large data sets, and they need replication of that data set, like you said, more than one media, two media, you yeah. know, one off-site. And uh, that's where the expanding options for large storage are, are, are much better now than they were. And I think that just talking about what home users need, we don't necessarily say it here. If you have a fair amount of compiled storage, and the, 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 that amount would, I guess, depend uh, differently on who you are. I've got about over a terabyte of photos. My wife's not a professional photographer, but she sure takes a lot of photos, and uh, I don't have time to go delete the ones of the, yeah, three right. sh the three shutters there, so it's just easier to protect them all. For us, uh, we've uh, been Drobo users for a long time, even before I joined the company, because it was easy that way. And there are failures that can happen, like a hard drive failure. Uh, you talked about you know, your uh, friends and family coming to you only after they're starting to have problems with a hard drive. That type of protection is kind of your first line of defense. Uh, a system like a Drobo can give you RAID protection, and it's not the bug spray that you spray on people, but rather redundant array of independent devices. But in Drobo's case, uh, mix and match any drives and expand on the fly, like you mentioned, uh, Nathaniel, is uh, what we provide you there. But it's not enough. You do need to have the backup done on a regular basis. And I'd agree that easy operation and knowing where to get started is there. So uh, at the end of this uh, broadcast, we all have a page up with a how-to guide on exactly how you can get a uh, crash plan working. And uh, one of the reasons why we wanted to have you on today's broadcast is it is a no-cost solution. So there is something in it for everybody. You don't need a Drobo to, to get started on it, but if you did, it uh, would work great for you. And overall, the experience that your friends and family have in getting it installed what do they say after the process? Are you remotely doing it for them, or are most of them able to get the stuff installed and get backing up to you fairly easily on their own? Well, uh, sometimes I'll check in with them and say, hey, how's your, is your backup running? Have you noticed anything? And they'll either say, oh, I, I totally forgot about it because it's so unobtrusive when it runs on their machines, and they just know what's running. But some of them have actually come back and said, you know what, it's really helped because I deleted some things, and I was able to go back and restore them without any help, and I got it done myself. And um, they can pull, if they're backing up to just me, they can pull their restores from my computer, and I don't even know. It's it's all handled quietly over the Internet, and they're self-sufficient that way. So they either forget that it's there, or they, they're able to use it without any assistance after it's set up because it just runs smoothly, it auto-updates, and I don't worry about their archives. So... That was one concern when I started doing this for more than a couple of people um, was I'm responsible for the integrity of these backup archives. Yep. And I know that one disk is pretty good, and I keep track of my hard drives and make sure they're healthy, but I can't prevent um, you know, unexpected crashes and things or power. So that's where the Drobo helped me you know, feel better that their archives in my house are safe. And, right. Uh, I don't have to worry about that. Super. The multi-destination is cool and secure and efficient transfers, I think, are a concern. As we actually go to the next slide, there are concerns about the performance over the Internet. Uh, the cloud, so to speak, is riddled with, you know, posts of people saying, hey, it was impossible for me to back up to the cloud because my Internet's too slow. And that's particularly the case with larger sets of data, maybe those photographers that have multiple terabytes. But in the case of your experience, you found that CrashPlan does a really good job of efficiently transmitting that data to give you ample performance. The compression, the deduplication, as well as the differential type backup really result in not as much uh, data going over the internet as you might expect. Is that something that even for the larger friends that you're doing collaborative backup with that they've found still works for them? Yeah, it works. It works really well. I mean, like I said, we can seed the backup. So if they've got a 500 gig, 600 gig data set, they, we can do it a lot faster uh, by truck. <laughs> 
if you will. It's sneaker you bring net. Bring external hardware, <laughs> you know, do it there locally, and then bring it and attach it to mine. It's a simple process. But most, most, most just do. They turn it on either at my house because they brought the laptop over, or at their house, and it just backs up. So, um, you know, I, I I just have a regular Comcast ISP subscription, and I know they have a 250 gig cap, and so I've been monitoring my bandwidth usage. Uh, monthly totals for several years, and I've never gone over that cap, and actually never close. Even with all the backup data coming in and downloading, um, it's been really uh, good to see that because I was concerned at first that it would be really taxing. But because it trickles in over time and it's balanced and it's not you know one large stream for 48 hours, I think that helps to spread that use out. Um, but I've never noticed any network hindrance at my house. Uh, even though these backups are running all the time, and um, I haven't got any complaints from my friends or family, so. Well, that's great. As long as your uh, kids don't all start doing HD video streaming well, simultaneously. Know, they're, yeah, they're not old enough for those um, online role-playing games that require the high ping times and latency. And yeah. Not there yet. <laughs> All right, cool. And in terms of the amount of storage, uh, one of the, the biggest knocks on cloud backup, and you might even be, be able to say this about the crash plan cloud, 10 gig is a lot of storage, but what if you have one terabyte, you know, 100 times that size? Uh, how do you go ahead and manage that? Because there's well, no limits on file sizes or total backup size, as long as the person you're socially backing up to has that space, you're able to, to do those backups, right? Yeah, so as you mentioned before, I used to work at Code42 Software where the makers of Crash Plan, and I learned a little bit about the nuts and bolts. And an interesting thing is that those archive sizes get broken up. So if I have a 500 gig total backup archive, each chunk is broken into 4.2 gigabytes so that it fits on any file system like FAT32. Mm -hmm. So it can grow just forever, as long as you can include the entire archive of, of pieces on one disk, it's going to be fine. So that's where, you know, my Drobo that has 5.6 usable terabytes can take a lot of data and, and not be a problem. Um, and it's just incremental 4.2 gig sets or chunks of that backup archive. And that's, that's whether it's on my computer or my friend's computer or at their data center, their cloud mm -hmm. centers. And when they, they talk about the use case, if you have a small set and you just need the 10 gig plan for one, it's really cheap, really, really affordable. If you have more, you jump up to their unlimited, and it's truly, truly unlimited. You know, they have some huge data sets that they're storing for customers, but they have a lot of smaller ones. And um, it just, they're, they're true when they say unlimited. That's what they mean, um, unlike some of the other providers. I know that recently there's been a lot of talk about free storage space. Um, from Dropbox, Dropbox and others, yeah, and SkyDrive and Box and Walla and all these comparisons and and I know the guys over at the Home Server Show have been talking about like if you divide it up and you put your documents here and your pictures there and your music on Amazon and you can spread it all out for free and that can certainly be done. It's not an approach I would want to take because um, I can't keep track of that all. So, it's a lot of work know. too. I mean, that's uh, you talked about trying to get FTP or web dev going right. on. Uh, and uh, the, Jim Collison's a big friend uh, of Drobo, uh, done plenty of reviews, so we love the people over there at Home Server Show. Those yeah. guys are enthusiasts. They are super technical and know exactly how to do all this stuff, build your own box, and they can do some of the complex stuff. Uh, what I love about CrashPlan is if you simply know how to use the basics of a computer, you too can participate in all those sort of cool things that the geeks are doing to make sure they have really good protection. So that's one uh, one of the things I like yeah. about this. And that's why you recommend it. Now, in fact, you also force everybody, if you're going to give them support, they got to be on yeah. crash plan, right? Yeah, if I have to repair or recover data, then you're not going to leave with a computer that doesn't have crash plan backup installed, even if it's the free version and it's backing up to me. Um, and, you know, one little point I have when those guys were talking about all these free services, most of those services they can be kind of termed as uh, backup, but I don't look at them that way. I don't use them that way. So I use Dropbox, Dropbox yeah. and you know I love it for a synchronization. These are the same files on different computers tool. Mm -hmm. I never would think of using Dropbox as a backup solution because it does do some versioning, but if I delete it in one place, I've got to go to try to recover it. I, I take backup and synchronization in cloud storage as two separate tools, and that's right. just 
Nathaniel's opinion, but I, I know they can be used both ways, but I, I really try to separate them out. Well, and I think that most folks who are home users that aren't technology enthusiasts but have a lot of data, the photographers, the DJs, folks who do a mm -hmm. lot of video, or just the average person who has photos of their kids they don't want to lose. True story, last year uh, the Harris Poll Interactive did a study. They asked over 2,000 people, would you take a million dollars to destroy all of your personal digital information? That's a lot of money. And go figure, 63% of people would not take the million dollars. <laughs> you, Nathaniel, I guess you, yeah. you wouldn't mind doing it because you uh, have such great backups. But wow, it goes to show you that the stuff's pretty valuable uh, and people don't spend any time or money on protecting that valuable stuff. Uh, yeah, one it's of the kind reasons, of remarkable. Yeah, what, what people like about CrashPlan, though, is that you know, the software upgrades are smooth, it's efficient, it works, uh, it's a very, very low cost. And from a peace of mind perspective, you know, not just having work there, but using it, the encryption's top notch and they don't have to worry about vulnerability of that data as it's going over the internet, right? Yeah, right. So with, with Dropbox, you don't have a lot of privacy addressed issues. And, and it's so I, you know, I don't put anything up there that's personal or secret, it's just simple file transfer for me, but with CrashPlan, I know I have several options for encryption on how private do I want to make that data. And uh, it, it's nice to have those options and flexibility. In terms of the, the photos and the $1 million, um, I don't think I would take that money either. You know, obviously I'm doing the backup, but like a lot of people, I take hundreds of digital photos, but I print out 0.01% of them. So yeah. that's my only copy, and um, my grandkids are going to have a hard time going through terabytes of digital photos trying to find good pictures, but uh, <laughs> maybe when I retire, I'll get them printed out. Or, or they'll have a new technology where you can use Siri on your iPhone or whatever just to right. go search and find the right ones. Yeah, show maybe. me all about the pictures of Grandpa. <laughs> that, it, it'll probably uh, be there. Technology's fun that way, and, I, and what's good, good is that there's consumerization of IT that has happened where technology that was only for the most technical experts now is accessible to folks yeah. at home. Things like CrashPlan and Drobo make it just that way. So in terms of putting it all together, folks, I am really happy to get this uh, photo snap from you, Nathaniel, one of yeah. the ones that's backed up on your Drobos. That looks pretty cool and clean and efficient. You got a Drobo, you got a Mac Mini on top, you got the networking right next to it. Nice and yep. clean going on there. What's not shown is your UPS. You do have it on a uh, uninterruptible yeah. power supply, right? Yeah, so and when we moved in a new house about four or five years ago, the power reliability is not quite what it what I'm used to. So we would get those short spikes where it drop off for 10 seconds and come back. And so I actually have four UPSs in my house. And this is one because I know it's really important to keep consistent power to the Drobo and to the Mac Mini because it's always on. And mm -hmm. so I have just a... a consumer APC UPS for both of those so that those little glitches and spikes and, and surges are, are protected against the equipment. And the Mac software does shut down if, if there's a power outage for more than the uh, backup battery can handle, which is, yep. is nice knowing that that's done cleanly. But it, it, it's kind of essential for me to have that, that uh, peace of mind with the power. And, uh, it, you know, the, the other computers do track how many times it happens. And I think I've had four power outages you know, a very short period in 24 weeks. And that's, I, I can't take that risk of the computers just dropping off like that. One yeah. of the things I did right. measure with this setup is the power consumption. So on your previous slide, it's really low. That's why I chose the Mac Mini, because it uses very little power. What I was yep. surprised at was that the Drobo didn't pull that much power either, even though it's got four spinning discs in there and fans. So this is a low power way for me to provide this solution too. I'm not uh, using up 150 watts, so, you know, under 100 easily. Yeah, under 100 when it's operating, and if you set the drives yeah. to spin down, it'll spin down, and the Drobo itself will operate like a nightlight, four watts, <laughs> while it's yeah. sitting there uh, uh, ready to go. And I think that's another really cool thing. We're from California, so we lick banana slugs and hug trees. We, we're, we like to be as green as possible. Uh, it's good to hear that also out there in the Midwest, you value the fact that uh, low power is kind of important, and it's super quiet, too. You can have this, yep. you know, if you were a a loft dweller in the middle of a city, you could have this uh, in your sleeping space and it's not going to bother you. Nope. Cool. Hey, well, let's talk a little about uh, Crash Plan Free versus Crash Plan Plus. It sounds like for some of the people that are backing up to you, they're using Crash Plan Plus. You yourself are using Crash Plan Plus. One of the things this diagram doesn't show is that at any one of the sites, you can have multiple computers backing up to your local Drobo storage. 
Uh, you can also have multiple computers going in multiple directions. We try to keep the, the diagram as simple as possible to impart <laughs> the idea that anybody can go to anywhere and you have the option of going to the cloud, but at each one of those endpoints, you can have you know, uh, a set of systems all backing up locally. So that's something that you get for free. Unlimited number of computers. Now, there are ads in the interface, uh, but they're not tough to deal with. And heck, you're getting a bunch of great value for free. So, uh, well, and they're ads for cool worthwhile. products, too. So yeah, they're good uh, ads to see. <laughs> that's great. Now, in terms of the, the cost for the Crash Plan Plus, Twenty four ninety nine for a year, and you get cool things like that continuous real time backup that you talked mm -hmm. about. So it just happens any time that it can. And with the ten gig of online storage, if you have more than ten gig, well, you can do Crash Plan to, uh, Plus to your uh, uh, all your friends socially, and then use that ten gig online to get that there. But going unlimited for a single computer is actually not that uh, expensive either. Fifty bucks a year. Do you have a lot of folks doing that? Yeah, yeah. So I have. I think I counted about 20 different people backing up to me, mm -hmm. and there's a mix. So some of them are on the crash plan free, and I'm their only destination. And mm -hmm. You know, that's better than zero. Um, yep. But some of the people are using crash plan plus, and they back up to the crash plan central cloud storage in addition to me. Um, yep. So it's, it's a real mix depending on what they are. That family plan is what I have, and when I bought that, it was only I could only get three years at a time, but I think they can offer four years now where you really drive that monthly price down. Yep. And uh, that's great for me because I have multiple computers in the household that I want backed up. And if you think about it, going back to that thing, if your data is worth more than a million dollars, your house is probably worth less than a million, yet you pay a lot more than a thousand bucks in a lot of cases to provide insurance for it. Uh, you can get insurance for your priceless data as well for a fairly low cost. But like you said, <laughs> I, I totally agree, Nathaniel, free, you can get something that's way better than nothing. It's infinitely yeah. better than nothing. And it's the type of thing that folks should really look at. In terms of how you use a Drobo here, a Drobo Direct attached to a computer, Mac or PC, works great. It can be the repository for all of the computers in the house that back up locally. If it's connected to a computer with crash plan, you can also be the destination for uh, your friends and family, which if you're listening to this broadcast, odds are you have an interest in doing that. I myself am this for my family because I, like you, Nathaniel, have to fix everybody's computer. Uh, one of these days yeah. I'm going to retire from that, though, uh, hopefully uh, soon. I have to find, I got my daughter all uh, equipped up. I have to pass the baton to her. One of the things I did want to mention, though, is that if you're using uh, Dribbble FS, our file sharing product, a NAS device, it cannot currently be backed up by CrashPlan. And really, most other solutions for cloud backup don't work with NAS per se as a server. So if you're running a NAS, there are some other ways you can go about doing cloud backup and offsite backup. Uh, if you're wanting to do a social backup like this, the easiest way to do it would be uh, to have a direct attached storage. And in your case, Nathaniel, your, your Mac mini is the home server, so to speak. You've got your uh, good friend that's running a Windows home server. A Drobo connected to those things, those are the server. They're up and running, they're all go going all the time. You wouldn't need a separate NAS it's probably easier to manage all of your stuff with a home server than if you had a NAS and tried to synchronize things that way, right? Yeah, that's one of the reasons I chose this Drobo model is because it was direct attached and it gave me flexibility. So if I you know, replace that Mac Mini or decide to move it to something else, all those archives and data are real portable in that Drobo and it's just direct attached. So that's where you're going to get the best performance for that backup. Um, if you think about it, a lot of tiny little streams writing to that disk all the time. If you're using over the network for writing, in addition to pulling in the data, it probably would um, change the performance in your household. Hey, well, it's been super having you on the, the discussion today, Nathaniel. I appreciate that. You got time for a couple quick questions? Sure. All right. In a three, two, one, what's the one for? I'll uh, hit that. The one is off-site. One of your copies needs to be off-site because if you have a meteor strike or something really disastrous, that's the one that you're going to be able to recover from uh, because you can lose of your three copies, if you keep them all in one place, uh, that's not going to help you out there. Uh, what about something like seven terabytes? Could seven terabytes be possible? Well, from a uh, storage perspective, uh, that four bay Drobo that uh, Nathaniel's using mm -hmm. with three terabyte drives would give you nine terabytes of usable capacity. You get a five, ter a five drive Drobo and you can get over 12 terabytes of user capacity on that. So that's something that's possible. You mentioned that, Nathaniel, that getting the data between the sites, if it's really large, could be tough, but you've had experience doing some seeding where they either 
back up locally to you while they're at your house or you take a drive and uh, kind of import that as a backup set. Maybe you can explain that again. Right. So it goes both directions. Say I, I come over to your house and your laptop's been repaired and we back up your data using CrashPlan to a local external hard drive. And then that creates an archive that's unique to that computer. Drive it back to my house attach it to my Mac Mini, and then use CrashPlan to say, hey, I'm attaching an archive, put it in the repository where all the archives are stored, and it'll, it'll move it over, and then you're 90% done. So that's a seeding process. But it works the other way. So your question about restoring from a computer, you can take the archive off my Drobo and put it on an external disk, just copy it over, bring it to the computer that's been restored or whatever, use CrashPlan to say, hey, here's the backup archive for this computer, and then you can extract all your files from that. So it really goes both directions. So if you, don't, if you have a large backup archive of a terabyte and you need it restored faster than you can download it, then that's a really flexible way to do it too. So um, that seeding process is, is good for those of you with large data sets. Um, in the terms of like uh, someone said a seven terabyte backup set, if you if you got your larger Drobo, one great way to do that would be to put a five bay Drobo at each location, so one local and one off site, and then back up to those both at the same time, and then you've got the full backup in both locations. And if most of that seven terabytes probably doesn't change very often, especially if you're a media creator, uh, right. it'll only add as as you add new media, but all that uh, those old assets that you have, audio, video, uh, whatnot. Uh, will uh, not change very often, so you're not going to have that going constantly back and forth, which is uh, a cool thing. In terms of seeing how CrashPlan, what the app looks like, our how-to guide at drobo.com slash CrashPlan will give you uh, screenshots of exactly what you need to do in order to configure that for your environment. Another question is, uh, if you export an NFS share on a Drobo using Mac or Linux, you know, how can you back that up? So in your experience, Nathaniel, you've got, let's say your Mac is sharing out one of the locations on its connected drive. It can be backed up by CrashPlan because it's just regular files on that drive as, as far as the uh, Mac's concerned and the other users are sharing it over the network, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I'm a little um, unsure because I haven't done a lot of NFS sharing. Uh, but I know that the Mac handles additional volumes, and CrashPlan can see data on external drives or volume-mounted drives and back that up when it's available. Right. So as long as the the storage is local to the computer from which you're presenting that uh, file share or uh, uh, NFS, mm -hmm. you can back that up. But uh, one of the things I know a lot of folks have home NAS or uh, they have a Drobo FS, uh, this solution isn't ideal for that particular a way of doing shared storage based on the way uh, it's put together. The client-based software, which uh, installs onto a Mac or a PC, is where you get all that rich and easy-to-use functionality from CrashPlan. And the only requirement would be that you have a computer that's turned on. Uh, I love your use case, Nathaniel, around the Mac Mini, which uh, is a, a great way to have one on all the time. Uh, a yeah, I would say if they have any questions they should uh, either tweet or call the guys at Code42 and the support team could really get into that scenario and ask them you know, specifically, this is what I'm trying to do, will it work? And they'll, they'll give you the right answer. Yeah, for sure. And uh, we love those guys over there uh, at Code42 at Crash Plan, also based in Minnesota. So uh, yep. they, they're, yep. they're happy Hometown. this time of year. Sil Not much Silicon humidity Prairie. yet. Cool. All right. So uh, last question for you, Nathaniel, around best practice of backup sets. You're using for it yourself the crash plan plus so you can take advantage of versioning and different backup sets uh in the software do you split right. up data sets uh to, i do to different destinations yeah you know that was one of the features i requested along with a lot of other people because i have two backup sets well three but one is the critical so all the documents folder and all my photos and some of the really key data things on my computers that i don't want to be without those get sent to three locations the crash plan central and that's i think that's only about 170 to 200 gigabytes it's not too much for me and that's all my photos but then i wanted to back up all my itunes library and media and stuff that i don't want to lose but wouldn't be the end of the world at a loss so those get backed up to the Drobo locally and to my friend because that storage is, is easily accessible. 
but that's you know much closer to a terabyte of data, and I don't I don't see a need to send that up to the cloud. So I do use those backup sets for that reason. Um, this is the super critical stuff, and this is the stuff that's nice to have backed up, and and I like that feature quite a bit. All right, I, I promised it would be the last question. I got one last one. All it's right. uh, around bare metal restore. Uh, is this the type of thing that gets your files back, or uh, do, should people think of crash plan as a way to really recover an entire system? And I, no. um, uh, how do you think yeah, about that's that? Easy. Because I, yeah. I, I say just think of it as your critical files. There's a lot of really great bare metal restore tools for the Mac and some for Windows where you can do that. Um, Super Duper and Carbon Copy Cloner, those are the best tools for those snapshots of the whole system. And you could back up those disk images using Crash Plan, but it's really not a bare metal restore tool. Um, it's really more to protect your critical data that you can't replicate. So I can always reinstall OS X, but I can't get my photos back. Indeed, and uh, oftentimes it can be faster to recover your bare system and put uh, your stuff back. And for a lot of home users, you're not doing really elaborate applications where you spend tons of time getting the system configured. You're right. really just, you have a lot of files and getting those back could be an easier way of doing it. The whole purpose of today's discussion as we go to the key takeaways, backups a must, home users need an approach that's simple and cost effective, and they need one that uh, allows them to do it for a very low cost on either a Mac or Windows and have their data backed up offsite. It's that offsite component where we get most of our questions. So I really appreciate you, Nathaniel, being on the program because the folks yeah. are looking for advice on how to do that. Drobo is a great fit if you have a larger repository for doing social backups and you can have another Drobo offsite too to go uh, back and forth between your friends. Some great ways to go ahead and do that. Thank you everybody for your questions. We'll go ahead and send some written responses to anybody who asked questions that we weren't able to cover live here on today's program. We thank you for participating and you can get some additional information on how to use Crash Plan, specifically with Drobo. Uh, you can go to drobo.com slash crash plan and get that detailed how-to guide as well as listen to a recording of today's session. So if you've got some of those friends and family who you don't want to support anymore, make them listen to this so they uh, know that they have to go through the steps and get backing up to you uh, as uh, the social backup hub, so to speak. So we really appreciate you for listening. And thanks again, Nathaniel, for being our expert guest today. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. It was a lot of fun, Mario. All right, cheers. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And tune in next time as we cover even more interesting topics around storage for small business and home users. Join us again on the Drobo Broadcast Network. See you next time.